What's up there, Duelist? My name's Inch95, and I'm bringing you guys a video on Dimensional Barrier. Just a quick card review and discussion. I managed to get one at my sneak peek. Uh, just like totally awesome. Unfortunately, I got one of each. I was really hoping to get at least two of each, um, but I'm still looking out. So if any of you guys out there happen to have uh, multiples of them or all these cards, I definitely need two totally awesomes and two Dimensional Barriers. I'd be very much appreciated if you guys could hook me up, as well as one Nemesis Archer and three of the ultra rare sub tear guy um yeah those are cards i really want to pick up but today i'm gonna be talking about dimensional barrier and why i think it's a pretty solid card i think this is probably going to hold more value like in general um it'll probably drop once the set releases a little bit more than likely just because it'll you know there'll be more in in uh in supply uh, despite demand probably still holding quite high for the card uh obviously as supply increases demand even if it holds you know the, the same even if demand is at the same point uh the value will probably drop a little bit uh, or at least a, a little a fair amount. Uh, same thing with Totally Awesome, I think, obviously, when this comes out. I talked about that in my last review. But today, as far as Dimensional Barrier, I think it's a really strong card, particularly in something pa like Paleozoics, which is what I really want to do use it in, just because it is a normal trap card. Um, I actually thought it was originally supposed to be a counter trap, and I was wrong, and that really got me excited for this card because... Uh, something like this, you know, anytime you get a strong normal trap card, it's something that you can it, it play and have it be vi viable in Paleozoics because obviously they all trigger uh, when, it, or you can trigger them rather, when a normal trap is activated. And this, it's almost like a mini Floodgate card. So if you don't know what it does by this point, it's basically just to claw declare a monster type. So Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, XYZ, or Pendulum. And then basically for the rest of that turn, neither you or your opponent are actually able to special summon those types of monsters or that declared, de declared type. And you can't even use the effects of those types of monsters. So, like, if your opponent has, uh, you know, a board full of five pendulum monsters or, like, let's say two pendulum monsters uh, and you activate this and you call pendulums, they're not going to be able to use those pendulum monsters' effects and they're not going to be able to pendulum summon for the rest of the turn. Similarly, if you're playing against something like Burning Abyss and you flip this and you name something like XYZs, well... All their XYZs are going to be shut off, and they're not going to be able to XYZ that turn. So they're not going to be able to Dante, Beatrice, uh, against Phantom Knights, or just in that deck, they're not going to be able to go Break Sword. Uh, just, it's really, really solid against a lot of decks. Uh, I think it's a very interesting card because we haven't really had too many floodgates in Yu-Gi-Oh where they're like single turn floodgates. Uh, I think the best example of like a single turn floodgate that I can just think of off right, right off the top of my head is something like Trapstun. That's a very good example of a card that's very similar to Dimensional Barrier and how it operates where it's a normal trap, you flip it, and it pretty much shuts off a, a given game mechanic for that turn for both players. Obviously, Trapstun shuts off traps. Dimensional Barrier, you can pick what type of monster effects you'd like to shut off. Um, but I think it's a really cool card. I think it's more than likely, I mean, I'm going to try maybe running it in the, maybe as like one of in my main deck or two of in my main deck for Paleozoics. I definitely don't think it's going to be like a staple three of in the main deck or anything like that because it still is a trap. It is still slow. Um, and, and the thing is, if you draw it against an established board, like, yeah, you can shut off their monster effects, but if you shut off your effects in the process and they're, you know, if you have like reactive effects, something like totally awesome, uh, or multi-trigger effects like totally awesome on your board or just anything any of your monsters like synchros or exceeds and you happen to call the same thing your monsters aren't going to be able to use them so it can be a double-edged sword it doesn't come up as often it can be quite powerful though in the same sense just like trap stun uh, where you can just lock your opponent out of the game and just win especially if you do it preemptively uh, or if you know like if you're you're baiting them into doing some kind of play and they just have no other line of play to win um, but I think it's a really strong card because, like, it's one of those things where, like, it's a it's it's like a one turn floodgate, literally for any type of monster effect that you would want to stop. Because you can set up your board, set this, and if you're playing in some kind of mirror match, you can activate this card, uh, call whatever, or even if it's not a mirror match, you can call whatever effect you don't want to be played, shut it off. If your opponent can't answer their your board with their board, because they need to use the same types of cards in something like a mirror match, for instance, if you're playing. Something like a, uh, I don't know, like if you're playing in something like uh, ABCs, like let's say you call Fusions and they can't bring out the Buster guy, right? Uh, they're going to have to exceed for other stuff, right? So if they do that uh, in Mirror Match and you have a Buster, you can you can be in a very strong position there because you can just do all your stuff and win. Uh, same thing with BA. You can have all your BA, you know, XYZs, your Dantes, and all the other stuff that you make with your Xyz. And then you can just do this on their turn in a Mirror Match against PK or BA or some kind of combination of those decks. And literally just win because your opponent has to use those same cards that you're probably using or similar cards to answer your board and when they can't do that you just win on the following turn so and the thing with this is keep in mind that like if you do this on their turn like i said earlier that only their monster effects are negated so like your opponent can still attack you um so this card can be problematic it can be slow uh, as a trap card it's not something like totally awesome where it just sits in your extra deck and you can make it so 
Um, I think obviously cards like this have their advantages and advantages, but it definitely is one of the better cards in the set. Um, I'm not sure. I think it'll. I think it'll slowly like it'll drop just a little bit in value when the set is released and there's a lot more in in the market. Personally, when the market's a little bit more flooded with them. Uh, but I think it's it's probably going to hold value a little bit longer than something like totally awesome. And that's just my personal opinion. I could be wrong, um, but I don't think like right now I probably wouldn't be paying more than like 50, 60 top if that for this. Um, I know for totally awesome, I think I probably wouldn't be paying more than 50 on during the week before the set's actually released. And that's like if you really wanted to get the cards. Um, hopefully I can get two more of these. If you guys can hook me up with some dimensional bears, that'd be very much appreciated because I definitely need cards to profile stuff and it's really problematic because obviously dueling network isn't a thing and uh, I can't seem to get YGO Pro and Dev Pro to work correctly. So, um, and I don't like proxying cards and as a YouTuber, it, like proxying cards is something you just hate, especially if you're doing real life deck profiles. If it's something small and like quick, it's no big deal, but uh, something like this, people don't really like it when you proxy stuff like this. So. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. It's a cool card. I think it's definitely more of a side deck card than anything else because the reality is if you, it's, 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 I almost compare it kind of like how uh, Cherries is right now. Some people are putting it in the main deck and it's one of those cards that can win you, especially, you know, games very quickly if the, the game, let's say, is flooded with a ton of ABC decks right now, right? But something like this, being a trap, being slow, uh, having its drawbacks occasionally uh, in the main deck is just, Unlike something like cherries, where it's like it sits in the hand, it's a lot more different. And obviously, that being a tuner has a lot more, um, a lot more applications with it. Whereas something like this, is a little bit more linear in application and a little bit more straightforward in a lot of regards. But um, I think uh, they both shut off things, and they're both definitely versatile. But I think cherries is probably a little bit more main deck capable than this, unless you're playing something like Paleozoics. Uh, maybe this is like a one of or two of in the main deck, but I definitely don't think I'd be running like three of this in the main deck. Cause like if you're going first, which a lot of decks want to go first, like if you draw multiples of these going first and you don't have like a strong board to set up, cause going first, you have five cards to work with unless you're, unless you go desires for the plus one usually. And after that, you like having one trap in your hand is going to take one less additional play you have, and you have less cards to work with. And if you can't make a board with those cards and use this to just lock your opponent out of the game, then it's just it's pointless to have something like this so it's probably a little bit better to um to implement this card a little bit better in the side that's just my personal opinion but you guys can share your thoughts down below again if you guys have either of these cards uh the ultra rare sub tear and a single nemesis archer i'd be very much appreciated if you guys can hook me up with those hit me up on facebook or twitter i really want to pick them up so i can profile some decks for you guys um i'm pretty sure i don't really need much else oh and i need like a crystal wing but that's not like a big like major thing right now if i can get a crystal wing dragon that'd be awesome um, hopefully I can, you know, do like a quick recap of all the stuff I got. Um, I did pull like some other cool stuff. Like I pulled the Venom Dragon. I pulled like two Nemesis Archers. Um, unfortunately, and I pulled the Alka Hest guy, the, the Metal Foes Fusion. But unfortunately, I think a buddy of mine wants that. Um, so I don't know. I pulled all the wrong secrets. I haven't pulled a single one of these myself. So yeah, it sucks. But uh, what are you going to do, right? So follow me on my social media guys down below. I'll see you guys. Peace out. And that has been a recap of Dimensional Buried, my thoughts and opinions on it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys. Have a good one and have a great rest of your week.